I'm here with uh, Lawrence Walker, who's been a friend for a long time, and I know many things about Lawrence's life, particularly during his World War II experience, and I know how recently he made a trip up to the uh, memorial, the World War II memorial, or, or uh, museum, I guess it is, in Washington. And I saw how excited he was about that, so I just wanted uh, Lawrence to talk with me. I tell everybody that I was draft dodger. I joined the Navy instead of being drafted because I didn't ever register for the draft, and and uh, so fortunately the Navy took me and. Uh, so you went in at six, what age were you? Seventeen. You were... Uh, three or four months at electrical school there in Bainbridge, Maryland, at that camp, and and uh, there was about two hundred or so of us in the group of that was in the electrical school. Not all in one class, but mm -hmm. all of us throughout, and it was six of us out of that group that I had to brag a little bit that six of us got a third class rating which you get a your uh, patch on your shoulder your emblem and all and then the chevron to show that you were a rating. Sent me then from there to Philadelphia Navy Yard and it was there uh, only a couple of three weeks and they my orders came that I was to go to Cape May, New Jersey and I was assigned to a sub chaser. I never heard of a sub chaser and they sent me down there. Of course I wound up uh, from going from the Navy Yard, Philadelphia Navy Yard down there to Cape May, New Jersey. We wind up, uh, since I was a rated guy, they give me charge of uh, about four more guys to take them down to, the, to Cape May, New Jersey for different sub chasers. And so uh, we got down there and everything blacked out because you're right on the coast and all the German boats and everything are out there and so you're right uh, everything blacked out so we stumbled around through that and that was a, an experience to get to uh, try to find where you were going but we finally found our uh, boat and uh, I, I, I would, won't you take just a minute to, to describe uh, a sub chaser describe the boat. How many does it hold? A All right. Bit about it. A boat, the sub chaser, as, as we knew it back then, was 110 feet long. It was 18 feet wide. The complement on it was 23 enlisted men and uh, three officers. It may have been 24. May have, I believe it was 24 enlisted men and and. Uh, and uh, three officers. Now, am I right? It was made of wood. Yes, yes. It was. It was wood, and uh, it was a tough. It was a tough little rascal, I can tell you. We, because we went in a lot of storms, had a lot of occasions to know that that thing would take you, keep on going, and. Uh, and then it was designed that for you to. Uh, Patrol and look for submarines. Right, right. It had uh, sonar on it, and uh, that's what our job was going out of Cape May, New Jersey. We patrolled up and down the coast, uh, up New York, and and back down. I don't know how far and all we went, but then if we had, if they had a tanker or something going out, or a troop ship, then uh, we would would. Uh, they would give an escort to them if they could over, couldn't do over 10 knots. And so uh, then uh, if a submarine, an American sub had to go out, we had to escort them out also and uh, to get them far enough out to where they were safe from other uh, German boat U-boats. Now, were you all on this how many hours a day or how did it go? Uh, 24 hours a day. We uh, where we'd uh, would be maybe be out on patrol for about uh, oh five to six days at a time, come in and then we'd uh, get ready for the next patrol. So these were uh, this crew was on that boat for together all the time and then some uh, other until boat. until until they started transferring different. Uh, uh, people off, you, you, you know, they change every once in a while, someone gets transferred, mm -hmm. someone gets sick or something like that. And and uh, so I know 
the first uh, the first uh, trip uh, patrol we had to make after I was got on there, we uh, hit what they call one of the northeasters up uh, there. And anybody that's rolled a northeastern Atlantic has had a, a, a roll a rolling rolling roller coaster ride, and uh, and it was uh, and I was new at that, and uh, I was I was definitely sick. I mean, I was seasick that you wouldn't believe. And uh, finally, well, uh, I laid back there in a in a gun turret, and no. Uh, I was just falling back and forth with, didn't care whether I lived or died. In fact, I hoped I was going to die. I was so sick. But, but that thing, it went, went on for several days, and we finally went in. We couldn't have done anything if we'd have found five subs. We couldn't have done anything to them because we, you, you have to be able to run a certain speed to get away from a death charger when you drop them. So uh, we, couldn't, we couldn't do any damage too much out there except to be there. And, uh, but you all had the capacity and that was your responsibility to drop uh, depth chargers yeah, to yes. destroy the submarine. Right, right. And uh, we, uh, uh, I know when we came in off of that trip, the captain called me down and he said, Walker, he said, I know it was rough and I know it all. He says, you want to take a, take a few days off and go home for a while? I said, no, sir. If I run from it now, I'll keep running, so I wouldn't go. And uh, he said, "Okay." And uh, so. But you were able to manage and get over there. I, I didn't season. ever. You can't. I don't think you can ever whip uh, seasickness. You can get over it to a degree, mm -hmm. but uh, sometimes it can be rough as all get out, and you don't pay a bit of attention to it. But next time, it, it don't have to be that rough, and you can be. And you can be real sick. I know. I'm, I'm asking you a question. I know part of the answer to. But have you kept up with any of the folks that were on the boat with you? I did. Uh, only uh, in the latter past few years, through the internet, that we uh, there's one. Uh, my son Ben found one fellow that was on the, the what we call the 1020, which is my boat. And uh, and so he called me to ask me. He was all excited to ask me if I knew him. Well, I didn't remember the fellow, but he was from Connecticut. And uh, so we got uh, corresponded through emails, and then I called him and talked to him. And uh, so we got together eventually and met in Washington and made a tour up there and, and uh, had a great time for... Uh, just the two of us and our wives, and uh, we stayed about uh, five days, and then uh, we've corresponded since then. Well, I uh, <clears throat> I found uh, another one of my best friends that I had on there was uh, a sonarman, and he uh, he found me. I didn't find him one day. He, a phone rang here at the house, and this has been nearly 60 years since I had communicated with him, and uh, uh, and, and and it was him. He had found my name on a. We've got a organization that's a Patrol Craft Sailors Association, and we have uh, uh, they list people off of the different boats and sub chasers. And, and, and all that are patrol craft, and uh, so he saw my name, and he called to see if I was, I was that that one, and I was, and so I got to see him when we went to Washington. But he was in bad shape, and and he did not could not go with us, uh, goofing off in Washington. So these were two of your former right. Uh, mates on the ship right. that you'd reconnected and y'all all got together at the same time. Well, you? no, we didn't all get together. The one in Connecticut didn't I get see. with this one. Dot and I stopped mm -hmm. by and saw uh, this one, in, one. This one lived in Virginia and we stopped there and uh, uh, visited with he and his wife. And uh, If I remember correctly, 
you and this uh, friend from Connecticut actually uh, looked at the museum prior to it actually opening, did you? It was while they were construction of uh, uh, the World War uh, Memorial there it's, it's, in Washington. Yes, sure did, and uh, it was. How were you received by them? By the people there that. Uh, uh, oh, oh, they were. They were. It was great. They, uh, the. We saw, we was looking through, there's some big columns there that's got the Pacific and then another side has got Atlantic. And we were looking through the Pacific hole and, and the, these white hat, hard hats walked by <coughs> and got to talk to them and, and they said something. Dot may have said, well, these fellows was in uh, <coughs> World War II and we were just looking. And they said, they told us, well, you come right around over here and they got us to a good place to take pictures of them. All of that, uh, of the truck.